Hello and welcome to this pan following tutorial part 4b. In the previous two tutorials we uh, discussed or we showed how to follow me using uh, keyframes and or using a, um, a modifier to get layers to follow or images to follow another layer across the screen. This presents another technique of doing the same thing except that this time what we're going to do is have the background move along with the layers themselves. So the images will follow the background layer instead of each other and they'll look like they're following each other. And this is the effect that I want to do. Now the key to this is using each of the uh, uh, layers, having each of the layers have the same scale as the background image itself it makes it easier to figure out how to address the distance between the layers and, uh, and the like if we need to and, and also other placement. So how do we go about doing that? Well what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have this image follow the background layer and then I'm going to duplicate it and replace the duplicates with the image that I actually want them to have. And the reason I'm going to do this is it saves me some work because I only have to do the pan follower modifier once. So I'm going to follow the pan X of the background layer, which is layer 4 here. Next I'm going to duplicate the layer. Now one thing to realize with the uh, with the modifier is that the subordinate layer is it has its center aligned with the background layer or the master layer that it's following, and so with the hundred percent layer, when we uh, make adjustments that are relative to it, those images will stay at wherever that offset is placed. So. I don't have to do uh, much of anything. I can drag and drop them and it will be exactly where I put them visually. Now, let's replace all these images with the image that I want. This is a special set, by the way. You know, if, uh, if I had, if either of these images, if neither of these images were 100% zoom, uh, we'd have to make some compensation for, uh, for that. But in this case, no big deal. Now another thing to realize is that this image, this background image, is five times the uh, screen width. That is, I'm using an 8,000 by 900 image. Uh, you can use any size image you want. Uh, it helps to know exactly what the distance is. Uh, because you need to uh, figure out what the pan of that background layer is going to be because all the other layers movement depends on it. Um, you can figure out the uh, how big it is relative to the screen by dividing the aspect of the graphic itself by the aspect of the screen. So in this case that would be a quantity of 8,000 divided by 900 and then divide that quantity by the uh, size of the screen which was 16 divided by 9. And in this case it comes up to 5. 5 represents a 500 percent increase over 1. So the distance from the center of this layer to the outside edge is 250. Distance from this one here is 250. Okay now I've got all my images uh, placed or all my images replaced. What I want to do now is drag them to wherever I want them. And when you do this, you can, um, once you've uh, placed them wherever you want them placed, you can change their uh, rotation, tilt, size, whatever. Oops, it's up to you. I want 
this one back. Okay, I want this at zero. Okay, I want this one here. I'm just doing this so I make it easier for me to figure out where the images are on the on the queue. Okay, now that completes that. Now let's do the placement of the graphic, or the let's uh, make the background layer move. Minus 200, 200. Now let's see how it plays. Everything seems to be fine. This works. Now, one thing to be aware of is that you're not always going to be able to figure out proper placement. And you might get close, we can get in here, we can mess around with these things and put them in there ourselves such that they look just the way we want them, but not always. In this case, these aren't quite centered and it would be nice if they were centered when it got started and have the end one centered as well. Sometimes it's not important, oft times it is. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's bring the screen back up to full size. And oh, by the way, uh, if you do have this graphic such that it is larger than five times the width of the screen, then your best bet at placing your images instead of drag and drop is to do it the method that I'm about to show you. Because you can't drag and drop these unless uh, you can see it. Okay, now go back up here. First thing you want to do is you want to create a notional screen. In this case, um, I have something that represents the screen itself and something that represents the size of the images. Now, in my particular case, my images are set to 30% zoom. I'm using fill frame for all, a, a, a fill frame scale for all of my images, which means that in the horizontal direction, my images are all going to be uh, the size of the zoom, except for the background layer, of course, because it has a special case, because its uh, aspect is larger than the screen aspect, and so its height is going to be the same height as the screen, but its width is going to be five times as wide. All these images that I'm using for uh, tracking across the screen their aspect ratio is smaller than the screen, and so their zoom will reflect the, uh, or their width will reflect the zoom setting that I choose for them. Now, when I put, I want to put two images together on the screen and have them evenly, roughly evenly spaced. That means that I've, I'm using 60% of the screen, and that leaves 40% unused. Now, if I distribute that evenly across the screen, I'll, I can put 20% between each image, 10% on the outside edge, 10% on the outside edge, and then the image that follows this image will be placed 10% outside this said side of the screen. So they'll all look about the same. Now, how do I find exactly how this um, is to be placed? Well, remember. My graphic is supposed to be 200, from, from the measure from the screen center, is 250% this way and 250% this way. So I'm going to start at the left edge, and I'm going to start with minus 250. Then I'm going to start with, I'm going to add to it this 10%, and then this half of the image, which is 15. That gives me the center point, which is what PAN uses for placement purposes. So minus 250 plus the distance between images, uh, in this case the edge of the graphic, plus 15, that gives me 225. Now the placement of the next image in line takes the two, minus 225, takes half of the image, plus this half of the image, plus the 20 percent. So 15 plus 15 plus 20 is 50. That makes it minus 175. And I do that for each of the images in turn. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go back to here. Okay, so the first image 
should be minus 225. The next one is minus 175. The next one, minus 125. Minus 75. Minus 25. Twenty-five, seventy-five, one twenty-five, and one seventy-five. Okay, got all those. Let's see how it looks. Okay, I've got one image there. Everything else looks fine. If I zoom down and I remove, you see that I do indeed have a little a bunch of space here. Now, no big deal. I'll show you why. This is one way of adjusting your screen of the distance traveled. Now, to the left, of my image is the ten percent of the. Uh, from the outside layer edge to the out, uh, inside screen edge. The graphic itself is 30% wide, and so to get to the center of the screen is 10. So 20 plus 30 is 50, and if I add that 50 to this uh, screen, so I'm going to end up with 150 instead of 200, and all I've done is cut off part of the image effectively. So I start with uh, properly placed images, and I end with properly placed images. And there we go. And that is that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.